Hey, so it's Eric, um, and this is my drive mechanism. And a lot of people that we just yesterday uh, at Star Wars Celebration Europe, uh, there was a, a, a great panel that talked about the workings of the internal workings of the actual BB-8 red carpet version. So the one that everyone in the world, millions and millions of people have seen rolling around, being cute, being really amazing. Um, so the cat's out of the bag. What you're seeing on the screen over here is uh, some some images from that that have been uh, happily uh, posted on, on the BB-8 Builders Club site. And uh, this is one of the this is the real mechanism, quote unquote, real mechanism, or at least the the, the, the red carpet mechanism. This is my mechanism over here. Um, obviously, they look quite a bit different, but they have a lot in common, which which is encouraging. Um, there's uh, obviously it was built by Hollywood professionals. Mine was built in by a hobbyist in the basement with obviously some some engineering background. So I won't sell myself too short. So anyway, what do the two have in common? Well, first off, you'll see over here um, the, uh, the the red carpet droid has a similar. Um, it doesn't quite have the triangles on here, but it uses a similar system where it has the extended hubs. Okay, the motors don't reach out and touch the sphere. What happens instead is there's a hub. And there's these, um, uh, the axles reach all the way in to the center where they're driven. Now, in my case, I'm, I'm driving them right here uh, from the, the, the first gimbal. Now, both of these are sort of a dual concentric gimbal design, another kind of cool thing. So basically, what that means is that there are two gimbals, and a gimbal is a mount that can move in two dimensions. So this, uh, my main gimbal is the, the one it, uh, the BB-8 can tip or lean from left to right, and it leans forward and back by driving these motors, which I can't really demonstrate because that would mean shifting the table. But for all intents and purposes, uh, imagine, okay, here's one dimension, and then this roll would be the other dimension, okay? So that's my first gimbal. Now, what the the, the Hollywood, the red carpet droid, is a little bit different in that um, they have their first gimbal on the outside is actually the head gimbal. Now, um, so the head rotates in two directions. You'll see mine over here. Uh, it goes front and back and side to side because in here is yet another gimbal, another a, a two-dimensional gimbal that it moves on. Now, so these are moving independently. So there has the head gimbal on the outside and the drive gimbal and the, uh, the you know, that has the pendulum and the, the gears on it on the inside. So conceptually, they're very similar. I, I could expand that out and then put that on the inside. And I've, I've, I've catted up some drawings to see how that might work. Um, reference that in, in uh, over on the Rolling Robots page, maybe uh, pop that into the video if I actually edit this thing. Um, but uh, so conceptually, that's that's very similar. And it's, it's exciting to see uh, what's going on. Now, the way that they are, of course, everything is driven is kind of different. Now, both of them have uh, a, they're able to spin on the spot and they do it in similar but different ways. Um, they use a single big flywheel uh, sort of thing at the bottom. And their flywheel doesn't look much like a flywheel, but it's basically a weighted wheel. We, we call them flywheels, but they're really just reaction wheels or something to push against. And you spin them, and your robot then, or the droid, kind of rotates around it. So they have one large uh, flywheel in theirs. And mine has this kind of split flywheel design. So there's two flywheels, the front and the back. And they both, you can spin them, and they, they basically serve the same purpose if they're both spun uh, in the same direction. So basically, um, it's it's sort of as if you were spinning a big wheel, but it's really that the, the droid itself has something to push against uh, gravity-wise. And that makes it spin on the spot, and you can also use it for a certain amount of steering, you know, general steering, or, or and so on with that. So they both have a flywheel on the bottom that's part of their pendulum, that allows them to shift left and right. Oh, can I hit my 3D printer over there? That allows them to shift left and right, and they both have uh, two gimbals that allow them to sort of move around here. You'll see up here is the head mast, and these are just stand-ins. These aren't the real magnets yet, because the real magnets are really powerful and dangerous, and I'm just using them to sort of hold the spot. So there would be four magnets in here, and then on top, and then there'd be magnets in the head that would be moving around uh, similarly. Um, this isn't the final version of my design. I've decided I'm going to swap out these, some of the motors for beefier ones. I've already beefed up the drive motors over here uh, considerably from Econ gear motors to uh, more heavy-duty planetary gear motors and changing the gearings and things. So 
again, conceptually, it's the concentric gimbals. Uh, they drive, they, they took everything a step further and uh, they move the drive motors. They have their drive motors down here, or at least one of the drive motors down here in the bottom. Uh, and there's a belt that comes up, drives this bevel gear, which drives at least one side. I haven't figured out, I, uh, my eyesight is not really that great when it comes to like staring at, at uh, these little um, graphics to try to figure out exactly how both are driven are they are they you know is the shaft does the shaft actually continue all the way through i don't know um and they drive their head gimbal basically with their servos instead of mounting them on in the mast as a counterweight like i'm doing here their servos are down here at the bottom and there's uh basically sort of these bicycle cables that drive the gears so i'm thinking maybe i could change to that you know put my servos at the bottom but the servos that i have in here right now serve a nice purpose in that they they counterweight the head so I kind of like that. Um, as long as I can fit everything in there, I'm probably going to just keep going the way I'm going, maybe change it around. So let's see, what other things do we uh, want to talk about? The head, the way it rotates, there's a, another servo up here. Uh, looks like a continuous servo. Haven't built that in yet, but that's the plan. Right now, there's going to be a continuous servo up here um, that's going to drive this and spin this around. So the head that's magnetic, magnetic, bleh, magnetic mounted up there is going to spin. Um, uh, with a via a continuous servo on here, or maybe it may be just a, a DC gear motor or planetary motor, something like that. But there's gonna be some kind of motor here that allows it to spin. So I've got two servos that allow here. Now my my drive mechanism here is a little bit different in that I'm using this kind of differential um, split. Uh, I'm not just controlling an x-axis and a y-axis. I'm kind of controlling the two together, and that's a bit to go into on, on this video. And I could split it out and kind of do it the way they're doing it. Um, but uh, like I said, right now I want to kind of see this one through because it has that extra benefit of the motors themselves being their own counterweight um, and allows everything to kind of you know be on the, the pendulum and, and fairly compact. So who knows? Um, Hopefully, I, I, this one continues all the way through. You get a good feeling for how well balanced this this kind of whole thing is, um, and it's really I think that's important. You know, that's that's one of the things that's important to me is to try to to, to make this as as well balanced as possible. I have actually a little three ounce counterweight at the bottom of this right now, just that keeps helps keep that balanced as well, and uh, so there's room for things like that. I uh, still have to figure out exactly where I want like all the batteries and things to go, but uh, I'm sure that will come. Now, I talked about the split flywheel before, and you might be saying, well, why the heck did you complicate things like that? And this is where I'm hoping that, that I can, I can uh, uh, forge some, some new territory, some new ground, and that you'll notice my, my design, it's designed to be very slim here. Um, if, I, if I aim the camera, everything kind of fits within this, you know, this plane here. And even though it tilts, uh, the amount of tilt that kind of keeps it relatively tight and maybe through some of these the way that that I have the spinners and some some other uh, weights I, I can minimize how much actual tilting I need to do and the idea is that over here there may be some room for some using some panels or things like that so I, I, I really want to be open to the idea of doing some animatronic kind of uh, give it some personality that I haven't seen done really extensively in in uh, BB-8 yet. Um, James Bruton did a little bit of it, and I know there's some designs kicking around out there, some some ideas about some animated panels, but none of them have been, other than James, none of them have really been followed through uh, to a working in a droid version. You know, there's been some like on a bench, look, we can open a door um, or stick a, a, a an arm out, but until it's really integrated in the robot with the drive system, it's all sort of academic and I suppose having a, dro a drive system that sits on a table just spinning around is, is sort of academic as well but uh, you've probably seen some Myota videos where uh, showed these things actually sort of working and even some of them in, in the droid doing it. So anyway that's my comparison. Uh, let me jump over here and uh, let's see I want to just pop to some actual video of this thing rolling here. This is over on the BB-8 Builders Club page. Highly recommend the BB-8 Builders Club so here you kind of see it in motion it's it's you know kind of cell phone of a video on a screen but here you're seeing the 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 uh flywheel rotating basically showing itself off all right now here you're seeing the head gimbal moving 
right? So the head gimbal is run by this wheel here and this wheel here, and you'll see the servos at the bottom doing the, the actual driving. See it over here and over here. All right, so one dimension, left to right, and back and forth. Okay. And then you'll see back here there's a bevel gear that uh, drives at least one of these shafts. Um, oh, wait, here you're seeing the tilt, which I think they're using either some type of linear actuator in the back. Uh, I'm using a servo. Uh, and now you can see the, the real tilting to make it roll forward. And that, I believe, where can you see over here? In the central gimbal, you see this, which it looks like it's driven by this belt back here. And that drives at least one of these bevel gears. And there's some other stuff in the center that I just I haven't been able to quite figure out yet. Um, at first, I was a little confused. I thought that uh, these would turn out to be um, slip joints, or excuse me, slip uh, connectors, slip rings. I thought they were brushless motors because I have never worked with a really expensive uh, slip rings, which these guys are these, these slip rings. Um, I'm using some cheap slip rings that will go inside these shafts here. So again, that's that's the the reason that the shafts extend away in the body. You can do that. Um, so that confused me. And you can see in here, I think that's the linear actuator that they're using to lean back and forth. I'm not sure what this one's doing here. Maybe that's just the uh, the drive motor could be, because it seems to be in line with that belt. Um, I guess those are the big batteries, and you know they act as weights as well down at the bottom. I have to kind of figure out how my weights are going to go. I think I'm going to just be putting them down here, my batteries, that is. Um, there's about six pounds or so in each of these flywheels. So there's about 12. Most of the weight of this guy right now is in these two flywheels. There's lead shot in there, and I'm going to augment that by actually using some lead three-ounce weights and the lead shot in there to be a little more dense, even more weight per wheel. So that would be interesting as well. Okay, so I've been rambling for quite a while, 12 minutes, 13 minutes or so. Uh, I gotta get back to things. A lot of these I just kind of put back together temporarily just for point of discussion. Um, so I gotta get to back to work on lots of other things as well. Unfortunately, this isn't my full-time job, um, but it is a bit of a full-time obsession. Um, so until next time, this is Eric, a.k.a. Eraser Mice, here on my LearnMax channel, talking about my Rolling Robots project. So check out the webpage, uh, or webpage, the Facebook page, the Facebook group. Check out my Patreon, all that information below. Subscribe, see what's going on, and uh, follow the 3D printed Rolling Robots version of the BBA drivetrain. And check out the BBA Builders Club. And uh, thanks to James Bruton, of course, who is a pioneer, one of the pioneers in the community. Uh, he's been doing the hubless wheel version of this for quite a while. It'd be interesting to see his take on what he thinks on the video once he gets back from Star Wars Celebration Europe. And to everybody else at the BBA Builders Club who have been uh, sharing their ideas, that's the main thing. It's all about sharing ideas so we can kind of home in on uh, uh, something even better than what's been out there before. Okay, so until next time, take care.